Hi, I'm James Lamont, co-chair for the Vadine Center for Rural Economic Development at the University of Minnesota Crookston campus. I would like to welcome you to the University of Minnesota Supply Chain Series. This series is geared toward educating you on understanding why there are shortages at grocery stores and food banks, but also what supply chain constraints are occurring within the national network for food production. This series will also talk about food production trends, global exports, and all of the requisite issues that are supporting what is currently one of the most difficult supply chain and logistics climates in modern history. This modern supply chain series we will talk about will focus on modern technologies, as well as the institutional behaviors that are currently influencing why we are seeing supply chain shortages for certain commodities, meats, and other products across the country. First, we're gonna talk about the food supply chain in general. In this diagram, you will note that we start at the farm level, we move through packaging and manufacturing, then we get to distribution and transportation, marketing, and eventually to your home. In part one of this series, we're gonna talk about the farm. The farm itself or ranch starts with inputs. The inputs typically include seed or all of the products necessary to increase yields or optimize yields at both farms and ranches. All of these components that are at the very front end of the supply chain in the United States are currently very healthy. As a result, we can move on to the next step since there aren't any issues here. Same thing with crop production. We aren't seeing many shortages within the United States. Uh, this is due to the fact that we don't have any shortages on the front end. And then farmers are producing at a very optimal level given the, the new technologies and inputs that they have. Simultaneous to that, we want to note that the problem that exists is when it leaves the farm and goes into distribution. Distribution is currently where the major choke point is in the United States, but not just distribution, but also in the value added packaging arena. So when a farmer produces his or her crop or a rancher in this instance, what will happen is they go one of two ways. It's bifurcated to where it either goes to a processing facility. So if you're, you, you go to a kill plant so that you can process meats, it'll go there. Or if it goes to a value added production facility, you're adding value by taking the raw material and creating a new product from there. Most of the issues we have in today's supply chain environment are from farm to distribution. That means processing and packaging. That is where we're typically seeing these constraints across the country, out at the farm level. And uh, we're also seeing some, again, at the value added stage. In the second component of this, we will talk commodity by commodity in terms of why we are experiencing challenges at the distribution and packaging level. But the important key takeaway here is from the raw input side of the house, in terms of how farmers and ranchers are utilizing their, uh, their inputs, everything is okay. I would like to thank you for joining us and I look forward to educating you on the second part of the series where we will talk about why these supply chain constraints and these logistics networks are being bottlenecked at the distribution and packaging level. Thank you.